in my last video, I briefly talked about uh, running ET Legacy through the Wolfenstein Enemy Territory Steam app on Linux and how you have to run it through Proton with the Windows binaries and stuff. Now, some people in the ET Legacy Discord pointed out to me that this is actually not the case, and that is true. You can actually run the ET Legacy native Linux version through Steam, and it is actually a lot simpler than it is on Windows, which is funny because it's only a Windows game on Steam. Uh, there are two, basically two ways to do this. I mean, they do essentially the same thing, but it's kind of just how you want to set it up. First of all, if you do not already have the game on your library, you actually cannot do it via the Steam client. You have to go through your browser and log in there and add it at the game to your account from there because the Steam client, uh, if the game is not supported on Linux, the Steam client will not let you add it to your library, even if you have Steam Play enabled. Uh, once it's on your account, you also need to make sure that you have uh, Steam Play enabled for like experimental tiles or whatever. So you just go to Steam settings, uh, Steam Play, and enable Steam Play for all other titles. Uh, I have currently set it to Proton Experimental. It doesn't really matter what you have it because again, we're not running it through Proton, we're running it natively. So this first method is if you already have ET Legacy installed on your system and you just simply want to run it through Steam. All you have to do is right click ET on Steam, go to properties and add these launch options. Echo, percentage sign, command, percentage sign, semicolon, and then input the path to your ETL binary in my case, it is this. If you have ETL on your path, you can just type ETL. And also, if you do this, you also need to set base path to the uh, ETL legacy installation folder because by default, it will default to the working directory, which in this case is the Steam folder for ET, which means that you do not have like legacy mod or anything there. So just type in plus set, set FS underscore base path and get the path there. And now, if you want to, you can add like launch options here, like plus set log file to here. So now when you run it, it will simply launch ET Legacy instead of the ET that is on Steam. And as you can see, it launches just fine. We are running the Linux version. We have Steam overlay and uh, if we look at Steam, it shows that I'm running ET. And you can see here that it sets the current working directory to the Steam folder, which is why we had to add the base path. So it finds all the files that I have in the actual installation folder. So the second method is if you want to actually install ET Legacy into the Steam folder where you have the regular ET installed. Uh, all you have to do is grab the Linux binaries, either 32-bit or 64-bit, whatever you prefer. Just keep in mind that not all mods are compatible with 64-bit binaries, but I'm just going to choose those because I only play mods that are 64-bit compatible. Uh, just You can just uh, download it straight to the Steam folder. I, I have a custom folder uh, for Steam games. I can't exactly remember the, what the default folder is. I believe it is like .steam in your... Uh, or like .steam library or something in your home folder, but you can obviously just go to the Steam app and do like browse local files for the game and you will get the correct folder. So I'm just gonna save it there and then I'm gonna extract these files to the Steam folder and I actually went to a subfolder, it's fine, I'll just Cut these from here and paste them here. And again, it will, just like on Windows, it will actually ask you to overwrite a couple of files. That's fine. So once you've done that, all you have to do is go to Steam again, right click ET, go to properties and type in the same launch option. Echo, percentage sign, command, percentage sign, semicolon and dot slash ETL. This time you do not have to put base path or like the full path to the EXE because you have the binary already in the current working directory. Now you might also need to make the uh, binary executable. I believe it is not executable by default. So uh, I'm just gonna show this in terminal because you can of course do it through GUI, but like uh, a terminal is like, well, it's universal for all um, Linux distributions. So I'm just gonna CD into my scene folder here.
and I believe this is the correct folder. Yes, so all you have to do is type uh, chmod plus x etl and etl dead. And there you go, now you, they are executable. So now, once we launch the game through Steam, after putting the launch options and making the binaries executable, it will launch ET Legacy from your Steam installation folder. And as you can see, it sets the working directory to the Steam folder and it will find all the uh, necessary files from there because you uh, extracted the binaries there. And as you can see, it is running, running natively again on Linux with the Steam integration and stuff. So that's all there is to it really to running with it with Steam. Uh, if you're curious about what the echo percentage sign command percentage sign does, uh, the uh, percentage sign command percentage sign is basically just the command that Steam launches when it launches a game through Steam. It will basically just run that in terminal on the background. So if when we put echo in front of it, it will actually simply echo the command on terminal instead of actually running it. Uh, if you do not put the echo in front of the command, uh, it will actually launch the regular game. And then once you quit it, it will launch ET Legacy. So if that happens to you, check that you put the echo command there. So now we have ET Legacy installed on Linux running natively through Steam with the Wolfenstein Emissary application. So you can track your playtime and have Steam overlays and stuff. So that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching again and goodbye.